give myself away so you can come on let him know I give myself away I give myself away so you can use me I give myself away what would happen if a generation embraced this come on tell me here I am here I am Amen. Let's turn to our Bibles right now in the book of um, in the book of Numbers chapter 14, verse 1. Numbers chapter 14, verse 1. And the congregation lifted up their voice and cried, and the people wept that night. And all the children of Israel murmured against Moses, and against Aaron. And the whole congregation said unto them, Would God that we had died in the land of Egypt, or would God we had died in this wilderness? And wherefore hath the Lord brought us unto this land, to fall by the sword, that our wives and our children should be a prey. Were it not better for us to return into Egypt? And they said one to another, Let us make captain and let us return into Egypt. Praise be to Jesus. Now this morning I want to talk to us on what I call not limiting God. Not limiting God. Ladies and gentlemen, I will submit it unto you that God can be limited. That God can be limited. God can never limit himself. But the subjects we can limit God. It is true, the Bible says, in the book of Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20, that he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above that which we can think or even imagine. But I want to make you understand the fact that God can, is able to do does not mean that God will always be able, that God will always do. It all depends on how we are responding to God. By our response, we can limit God or we can allow the scripture, the Ephesians 3.20, to become a reality or become the truth. Amen. The word to limit means to restrict. It also means to set boundary. It also means to restrict within a radius. Did you ever know that God can be restricted? And the only person who can restrict God is not God himself, but it is you and I. Praise be to Jesus. Praise be to Jesus. So it all depends on how much God can do with your life. How much God can do with you depends not on God, but it depends on you. How much God can do in your life does not depend on God. It fully depends on you. It is your responsibility on how much God can do with your life. There are people who believe that God can only save, but God cannot heal. Let me tell you, there will be serious, but they will miss the healing part. There are people who believe they can only be saved, but they can never rise above poverty. Yes, they can only be saved. It can be well with their soul, but materially they can go to heaven purpose. Because there is what I call 
called the will of man. God has given us the free will to make a choice. We can choose to love God and we can choose to reject God. We can choose to believe God and we can choose not to believe God. It is all about us. But every choice you make, there is a consequence. Which may be bad or which may be good. So I come to talk to us this morning. Let us remove every limitation that we have put on our God. Because God will deal with you just the way you deal with Him. You handle God carelessly, He will handle you carelessly. For the Bible says, whatsoever a man soweth, the same shall reap back. It does not only happen with money, it also happens with the way you treat God. Amen. You treat God carelessly, God will treat you carelessly. Yes. If you love God, you will get the love of God back in your life. Yes. You commit yourself to God. God will in turn commit himself to your life. When God becomes your concern, your concern will become God's concern. When you take care of God's activities, God will take care of your activities. When the things of God moves your heart, your things will move God's heart. Let me tell the truth. God can never respond to you until you respond fast. Because God is not a dictator. In Revelation 3, 20 say, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone hears my voice and open, he is gone. But he's not saying that even if you don't open, I will break the door and come in. No, he's gentle. I stand at the door. It is at your own will if you open. I will walk in and dine with you. Don't put limitation on God. Amen. Don't limit God. God can do more than what you think. God can do more than what you know. God can do more than what you imagine. It is only you who can stop God. It is not a devil. It is you. Many times we bind the devil even where the devil is not. And the devil wonders. Even though you're binding me, I'll not be there. <laughs> because we have put limitation on God. We have said God can only do up to here. But this one here, I will try to handle myself. You can never hurt yourself. Listen to me. From this source, believe God for whatever you want believing for. Believe God for any miracle you want. Believe God for every breakthrough you want. For God is able. I think God is able. I give my testimony here. On one Friday night, and for sure, my in laws were not wrong. I was poor. They were not wrong. They were not wrong. I was poor. But I believe God. I continue to believe God today. Though I have not arrived at where I want to go, but I thank God I am not where I used to be. I am not to be there yes, but I bless God, I am not where I was yesterday. Why? Because I believed God. The children of Israel came to a place when they were challenging to us the promised land. And the Bible says when they came to such a place, in verse 13, chapter 13, Moses had sent out the spies to go see the land and come back bring a report. And when they came back, the ten of them gave a 
in my report. Child of God, be careful with whatever comes out of your mouth. Even the church setting like this, I'm a pastor. I've been a pastor for so long, I know. In a church setting like this, things come from nowhere. But be very careful with what you say to the next person. So the ten said, man, the land is good. The land is neat. There is so much in the land. But you know what? The land is so fortified that we can't penetrate. We saw sons of Anak in the land. And the Bible says, their whole congregation broke down. And they began to cry. And they began to ask Moses a question. Hey Moses, why didn't you leave us back in Egypt? We were okay. They were wrong. They were liars. They were not okay. They were suffering. Let me tell you. You know sometimes people can try to play smart and yet they're suffering. Mm. You ask them, how are you? Fine. But the truth is they're not fine. There are things which are eating them in the inside. When people sleep, they cry. Listen to me. They said we were okay. But were they okay? Ha, ah, let's talk to you. Were they okay? They were not They were slave. How can a slave be okay? How can you be okay when you're a slave? And they began to say, we were eating. Can eating only make you okay? Only eating. Many are eating and they're full of troubles. They eat, but they don't sleep. They eat the best. But if it's a husband and a wife, they eat, but they can't talk to one another. Ah. They told Moses, why did you pull us from there? And they say, let's look for a captain. Let's choose a man to take us back to where we came from. One thing they were forgetting that it was not the hand of Moses who brought them up to where they were. It was the hand of God. And one thing they were forgetting that if they leave God behind, they can't make it back. One thing they were forgetting that as soon as they crossed the Red Sea, it did not remain open. The water came back. Then you never your hand nowhere. I'll tell you, you are going back nowhere. <laughs> the far you have come, it is God who has helped you. The far you are today, it is God who has helped you. The Bible says, He's the one who gives us the power to make wealth. Praise be to Jesus. Amen. Let's choose a man. Let's choose a man. Listen to me. Not every man can help you. Listen to me. Not every man can help you. There are people God has destined for your help. I say there are people God has destined for your help. There are people you come close to them. You join them. Even if all thousand demons were around you and there, all demons will run away. Let me tell you. There are people just by greeting them. Even if you have no peace, peace will roar in your, Amen. In your heart. Amen. There are people that associate with a man like my pastor here. Just by brushing shoulder with him, all things will be right. I say all things will be right. I say all things will be right. Let's choose a man to go back. Please hear me, child of God. You have come too far to go back. You have come too far to go back. Hey, don't ever think of going back. Even when things are tough, continue. When things are not working, just stand still. The Bible says, stand still there, and you shall see the salvation of the Lord. Stand still. Things are not working, but stand still. Your money is not enough, but stand still. You have children and rebellion, but stand still because God will come for you. They limited God. The God who delivered them out of the hands of Pharaoh. The God who parted the waters. They began to limit God. They began to see him as God who cannot walk. In the book of Psalms, 
78 verse 41. Psalms 78 verse 41. The Bible says, yeah, they turned back and tempted God and limited holy, the Holy One of Israel. Do you know when we tempt God? We tempt God when we begin asking questions like, can God really do this? Can we handle this? When we begin to complain and to murmur, we are tempting God. And the Bible says, so they limited the Holy One of Israel. It is them who limited God. It is not God who limited them. The far you can go depends on you. The far you can go in this life depends on you. How do we limit God? How do we limit God? Number one, we limit God in our mind. We limit God in our thinking. Let me tell you, you can never rise above your thinking. Your life is caged within your thought pattern. You can never become what you have never thought you would be. You can be a nothing today, but if you have high thoughts, no devil whatsoever will stop you. I said no devil whatsoever will stop you. We limit God in our thinking. No wonder Romans 12, 2 says that be you transformed by the renewal of your mind. The problem is not your heart. The problem is your mind. When your mind is renewed, then you shall know what the will of God is. Praise be to Jesus. Praise be to Jesus. The book of 2 Kings chapter 5 verse 11. 2 Kings chapter 5 verse 11. But Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought Naaman was wroth and he went away and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord of his God and strike his shadow over my place and recover the leper. I thought. Naaman was a great man. Naaman was not a small boy in the village. Naaman was a captain. And the Bible says by his hand, God had given victory to the nation of Syria. So Naaman was a respectable man. Every time he went, every place he went, people saluted Naaman, but Naaman had a problem. They were saluting him, but Naaman had a problem that nobody could see. Naaman was a leper. Leprosy was in the inside. But outside they were saluting him. And the Bible says, he, he had a maid. He had a small girl in the house. Who was like a slave? And one day the small girl said to them in the mistress, that I wish my master would go to where I came from. There is a man, there is a, there is a God that will worship there. That God is able to heal you. The God is soft can heal you. I said the God is soft can heal you. So now made his job to make the Elijah to cut the long story short. When Naaman appeared before Elisha, the Bible says Elisha did not come out. Elisha, God will not only meet you the way you want. It is not at your standard where God will meet you. God will meet you at the standard. So sometimes you want God to bow to us. No, God will meet you at his own standard. It is not at your own standard. Never set standards for God. Let God set for you standards and say, Yes, sir. So now I came to Elisha. And now I stood outside. Probably maybe Elisha had some footsteps. 
Elisha told his servant, Gehaz, Gehaz, go out there and tell Naaman, give Naaman some instruction. Give him some instruction of the things he needs to do for him to walk away the ceiling. Simple. Let me tell you. Things of God are very simple. Don't complicate things. Don't complicate the things. They are very simple. You follow instructions, they were free. When I was joining high school, on the first day in the parade, when the headmaster was addressing us, he said to us, the rules of this school are very simple. You follow them? We will not have a quarrel with you. But you know what? He brought them every day. And they quarrel with him every day. So Gehazi came up and he told Naaman that Naaman, the master, has told me, Go to the river Jordan, dip yourself seven times, and it shall be well with you. Yeah. Then, simple and clear, and he went back. <laughs> then Naaman was like, Huh? What is this? I thought, I thought, himself will come out. Nobody's bigger than God. No matter what we have, we can't be bigger than God. I thought you would come up and wave his hand over me and speak some words. Do you know there are people who believe that until you lay your hands on them, nothing can work? Let me tell you, if there's a thought, as I talk right now, you can receive your miracle. I say, as I talk right now, you can receive your miracle. Because there's power in the world. He sent his word, and his word healed them all. Now, I thought, I thought, friend, don't bring your thinking in the things of God. You can never understand God. You only need to believe God. You can never understand Him. Because when you think God is done this way, God will come this way. When you think God is down, He will appear short. You can only believe God not to understand. When you try to understand God, you will never understand God. You will never understand. When you believe in the better, don't try to understand Him. You can never tell God to another man like my brother Moses and try to get and know how does God behave. Because when you think God is coming like this, then God is coming like this. When you think God will bless you in this way, then God will bless you in that way. Let me tell you something. I had a friend of mine. This friend of mine was, was a white man. He had come to check on a friend of him back in Kenya. And we got to know one another. So one day, this guy came to me. They told me, Pastor George, why don't you take me to a mission in some parts of the nation of Kenya? I said, yes. Yes, I can take you. And they told me we will be out there for one week. I said, it's okay. Why? Because in my mind, I knew this trip will not leave me the same. You know what I'm talking about? You haven't gotten me. You haven't gotten me. I had done some arithmetic in my head. And I said, now this one will be God. One week within this month. Ah! God has delivered me now. <laughs> so we went out with him. The man took me to the best hotel in town. He was living in the yeah. best hotel in town. And every time we will go for dinner or breakfast or whatever lunch, to the waiters. And I was saying in my heart, if, if this man is this to the waiters, mine will be more bigger. <laughs> The man would pull out good notes and give things the taxi. I was saying, my goodness. <laughs> Mine will be better. 
ministry. I was enjoying every moment. I was if this guy is dishing money left and right to these strangers, but for me, he called me. in my heart. Some, some budget. <laughs> and this one, I've hit it. No doubt I've hit it. When we came back to the hotel where the man was living, told me, George, I want to burn up. I'm tired. I said, yeah, sir, it's okay. Go burn up. But I knew that before you could have burn up, you could strike something. <laughs> I tried to pull my suitcase to make him know that I'm now just about to leave. <laughs> then the word he told me, George, as you go, greet your beautiful wife and your beautiful daughters. I said, what? <laughs> what? And I said, George, as you go out, pull back the door. Said, what? Uh, we are not done. I'm pulling back the door for what? <laughs> the man pulled, pulled the blanket over his head, and there he was. I dragged my suitcase, cursing this man. I said, I curse you with all the curses of the earth. You are so wicked. <laughs> a wicked man like this one keeping me out one week a husband and a wife a father of children one week and you send me away empty handed I said this man is not serious so I went in my pocket I only had 50 shillings that I don't know how much it is it's a dollar. Less than a dollar. Two quarters. Which was not enough for my transport, even from town to my home. So I stood by the road. Can't sing him when I say yes, not. Then I saw a friend of mine, a bishop. In fact, he's the one who saw me by the roadside. He was driving his Prado, his big machine. He said, ah, Pastor, man of God, how are you? How are you? I'm fine, sir. I'm fine, sir. I'm fine, sir. So, ah, man, let's go to my house. I said, okay, fine. Maybe, maybe God wanted to do it. <laughs> so I got into the brother and he went to his home. A true story. He went to his home. We had good lunch. And he said, George, I've enjoyed your fellowship. Let me call my driver to drop you at the bus stop. I said, God, this one also is nothing. <laughs> so the driver dropped me at the bus stop. When all the, when the touts saw me alighting out of a big machine, they were all rushing to me. Where are you, sir? Get into my car, get my car, sir. They didn't that this man they are calling sir, I have no money. <laughs> Somehow God worked a miracle that I had home. Unfortunately enough, I met with my wife at the market. When she saw me, she was so happy. I, I could not even pay a taxi. A bicycle, it was not a car, a bicycle. Then I asked her, honey, can you solve this? Then she asked me, maybe not have changed. <laughs> 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 we shall talk it later. That's, that's, that's not about. <laughs> so we went home. As I was approaching my house, I saw my children, all girls, running, daddy, 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 jumping on me. I said in my heart, that man is weak. <laughs> He 
in the night I told my wife the story. We didn't have much discussion that night. <laughs> but in the morning, when you woke up, still weak, I'm cutting that weak at night. I saw a guy walking in the house. He said, Pastor, I want to come and check on you briefly. I said, What? Have you not commanded us last night with my wife? And he pulled out an envelope and he gave it to me. So in my heart I was praying, God, let him go out quickly. <laughs> 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 what is inside this envelope? <laughs> as soon as the man went out, I dashed in the bedroom and I opened the envelope. It was 30,000 Kenyan shillings. $400. 400 dollars. <laughs> Smiling, God told me, You foolish guy, don't smile. <laughs> God asked me a question This which you have got, did you work for it? I said, No, daddy. Yes, did you go for a mission? No, daddy. Did you, did you preach? No, daddy. He said, From today, don't leave it to me. Yeah. Begin to trust me. I begin repenting of casting that man. <laughs> Don't leave it, God, in your mind. Don't leave it, God, in your thinking. Don't let your thinking limit God. God taught me a lesson that is a God. Who cannot be limited. We limit God. Sorry, I'm finishing. We limit God. We limit God in the way we see. In the way we see, we limit God. Praise be to Jesus. Numbers chapter 13, 28, and verse 33. Nevertheless, the people, the strong that dwell in the land, and the cities are warm and very great. And moreover, we saw the children of Anak there. We limit God in the way we see. Hear me, please. What you see as dead, God sees as living. What you see as impossible, God sees. What you see like cannot walk, God see as an opportunity to drive him is miracle. What time great army surrounded Elisha and the servant of Elisha went out and he saw a great army around them and he cried and said, My master, we are finished. When he went back, Lasha said, God, open his eyes that he may see. When his eyes were open, he never saw the armies again, but he saw the armies of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Don't limit God by the way you see. The Bible says, we walk not by sight, but by faith. Praise be to Jesus. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 11 and 2. God asked Jeremiah, Jeremiah, what do you see? After Jeremiah responded, God told him, Jeremiah, you have seen well. God wants you to see well. Yes, yes. See things in the eyes of God. Yes, yes. When you see that matter in the eyes of God, even though it's done through trouble, it will work. See things in the eyes of God. Don't limit God. But you will see. Praise be to Jesus. Praise be to Jesus. Praise be to God. 
In Genesis 13, 14 to 15, God told Abraham, And the Lord said unto Abraham, After that lot was parted from him, Lift up now thy eyes, And look from the place where thou art northward, And southward, and eastward, and westward. For all the land which thou seest, To thee will I give it, And to thy seed forever. As far as you can see, God will give it to you. If you see victory, you will walk in victory. If you see blessings, you will walk in blessings. If you see favor, you will walk in favor. If you see goodness, you will see. You will walk in goodness. No matter what you go through, don't keep your eyes on the situation. Keep your eyes on God. Don't limit God by the way you see. Listen to me. Stop limiting God. In the book, in the book of, in the book of Job, chapter 42, verse 2, verse 1 and 2. Job, Job, I finish. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou can do everything. Not one thing, not two things, not three things, but I know thou can do everything. God can do everything. Child of God, He can do everything. I say everything. That one which is troubling you is a minute everything. That one which is causing you pain last night it is a mother's everything. And it says, and I know that your plans can never, can never, can never, can never be stopped. He can do all things. And his plans can never be stopped. I encourage your heart. God can do everything. I say God can do everything. I say God can do everything. Stop limiting God in your mind. Stop limiting God in the way you talk. Stop limiting God in the way you reason up. Stop limiting God by the reports you hear. Don't do that. Stop limiting God. He can do everything. How many believe God can do everything? How many surely believe that God can do everything? Rise up on your feet. Lift up your hand all over us, please. Raise up your hand to God. I want to, I want to say to you. Give myself away so you can. Come on, let him know. I give myself away. I give myself away so you can use me. I give myself.